So we all heard today, AI agents promise to transform everything around us. But the reality, most organizations cannot get those agents out from pilot phase. So today, I want to explore some of the challenges and solutions to overcome this. And the reality is that most people right now fear AI. They will cite poor quality, poor practices, claiming that they can do a much better job and they don't need it. They fight. But in reality, this is a losing game. Think about it. ChatGPT was introduced three years ago. It wasn't perfect. It hallucinated a lot. It couldn't even solve some of the basic mathematician problems. But now, nowadays, almost everybody is utilizing LLM for writing from everyday communication like emails to technical documentation. And we can see this happening in other areas. Think about image generation. Remember those six fingers people? Like, we laughed, right? But now it's so good that sometimes I see an image online and I question myself, is this real or is this AI generated? And I can continue, think about coding, data analytics, and even more important, empowering startups to compete with giants. So what I want to talk about, what if instead of thinking of how we should not utilize AI, how to really resist this, we say, how can we make it better and empower ourselves and empower organizations around us? Think about something very ordinary. Let's say a bookstore. Imagine this. You are planning a vacation. You want to go to the mountains, no devices, no people, just nature, you, and perfect book. So you go to your local store. It looks beautiful. Let's see. Feels like it survived a century. Look at that typeface. Gorgeous. Beautiful moment, right? But the reality is, you come to that bookstore, there are thousands of books, the staff members helping other customers. You go to a shelf, you pull the book, one is too long, another one is too dark, and your perfect book may be somewhere on the back room, right? So 30 minutes later, you leave frustrated and empty-handed. What if instead we first could go on a website and would type something, I'm planning a vacation, give me a light fantasy book, and the AI agents will reply us in seconds, I have perfect three recommendations for you. It's on aisle three, shelf B, would you like me to set them aside, or would you like to learn more? So now we feel empowered, not overwhelmed. And that's what I want to talk today more. How can we be more empowered and help others? But first, what is AI agent? If I ask right now 10 people, they will give me 10 different definitions. Somebody will say, oh, it's just a chatbot. Others will tell me, oh, it's autonomous system that's going to take over the entire world. But the answer is actually quite simple. It's an intelligent program that takes your goal, takes your information, and figures out how to achieve this. So you as human set a goal, and agent identifies the route. But building those agents is quite challenging because it involves many, many steps. You have to first prepare your data, create those vector search index. You have to utilize many different frameworks to stitch the agents, figure out which LLM to use, how to, to, to utilize your prompt optimization. And then you have to govern them, you have to monitor them, you have to deploy. So a lot of the steps to get there. And that's why over 90% of organizations currently fail to get those AI agents from proof of concept to production. So let's talk about what is the core foundation of building agents. If we think about the first thing that we need to have is, of course, hardware. Right? So we need to have a GPU where we can run those models, uh, where we can serve them, um, where we can fine-tune and deploy. And then at the upper stack, we have different building blocks. Those are agentic frameworks. Uh, so at Databricks, we are multi-cloud, so you can connect to 
any data, any cloud, and utilize any LLM. So that's the only platform that actually provides users' choices. And then at top, we have this new agentic layer. This is where right now a lot of innovation is going. So you can see this field is maturing. A lot of new products coming up that is kind of built on top of these building blocks to simplify agent creation. So let's go back to that um, bookstore. If we think about building a system now, a genetic system, there are a few ways we can go about this. We can, of course, go with no-code builders. But the thing is, with no-code, that it's quite easy to use, but it's fairly inflexible. So if you want to build something custom, you often have to end up with building your, your own DUI agents. And that's where you have to think about framework for, let's say, multi-agents or maybe retrieval augmented generation, right? And you have so many things that you need to consider. That's why you will get to high quality, but it will be fairly complex because you have to have expertise in data engineering, in machine learning, in infrastructure. And if you get something wrong, the cost will just explode. So that's why uh, Databricks recently released a new project, a product that's called Agent Bricks. And the idea is there that basically we packaged a lot of those technologies and we optimized agents based on your data. So if I go back to the example with bookstore, let's say you go on the bookstore and it can be pretty much anything, right? So you decide to build multi-agent system. So the first that you will need to do, most likely, you have unstructured data. So somehow we have to build agentic retrieval augmented generation. So you can build first a knowledge assistant where, let's say, some, there are some papers with staff recommendations, some PDF documents. You can ingest all of the data, and behind the scenes, it's actually going to create this vector search index, or you can also connect your existing vector search index. But the first thing is that you have to first convert your unstructured data to the vector search. Then, of course, for a bookstore or for any business, they also need to connect to operational data. So now you need to connect to more like a relational uh, tables. So at Databricks, we have an agent that actually transforms. It's already completely built, and it transforms your text to SQL. So now you can just select that agent, point to the tables, and now you have another agent that now is basically uh, can get your structured information. So if you ask for something like, I want to get a fantasy book for my vacation, the agent can first find maybe some analyzed summaries, identify what makes every book special, and quickly get this information, and then get information from inventory system to see what's in stock and suggest you the book. So, let me actually show how it looks in life. Recorded a quick demo. Let's see. Here's how your local bookstore can utilize AI agents. They've given an agent access to all their unstructured data, documents with reviews, recommendations, and also connected it to their inventory system. So now you can ask an agent for a book recommendation for your vacation, I'm going on vacation to the mountains and want a cozy, short fantasy book. Watch what happens. The agent understands exactly what you're asking. It's analyzing multiple resources, new releases, staff recommendations, book summaries. It has access to all the summaries, every review, every recommendation ever written. No human could possibly hold all this information in their head. Notice how it determines you're looking for something short, perfect for vacation reading, relaxing, heartwarming themes, not dark fantasy. It's using multiple tools to get a comprehensive recommendation. And here's where it gets interesting. It hands off to a different agent to check inventory. This is multi-agent collaboration in action. And look at the result. We don't have that perfect book in stock, but we can order it for you. Here are three alternatives 
we do have with their exact locations. Would you like me to set aside these titles for you or want to learn more about any of them? This transforms a simple query into a personalized data-driven experience. So what's special about this demo, not only it was about AI agents, but I actually utilized AI agent to create it. So it was AI edited, AI narrated, and I basically outsourced the entire content creation now to agents. Uh, now let's dive into how actually to build something like this. So the first thing uh, with uh, agent bricks, you have to identify what's your data, right? For any agent, it's based on your data. So you have to specify what are those data sources. Then you have to provide the guidelines, what you want the agent to achieve. And then what agent is going to do, it's going to create customized benchmark for you. And this is very important because it will help you to evaluate AI agents, not just create them, but really understand if they are solving your problem. And when you create those customized uh, benchmarks, then we will utilize different frameworks. Then think about uh, prompt optimization, fine tuning. So behind the, the, behind the product surface, maybe you heard about MLflow open source framework that basically is helping to identify how well Agent is performing. So it's going to utilize those different frameworks to figure out which method is specifically optimized for you. And then based on this, uh, we, you will get the Agent that has those quality trade-offs between quality and speed. Uh, so another thing with multi-agent capabilities, it's a very powerful to utilize MCP servers. So if you want to extend it to other tools, you can, with multi-agent capability, you can add MCP server. And now, let's say you have additional data somewhere in a different system. You can plug it in and um, use uh, more of a different MCP servers. I personally find MCP servers incredibly helpful for my work. I use a lot of managed MCP servers where it's simply you provide a link, you provide authorization, and now you don't have to manage any infrastructure uh, because one agent is just looking at different MCP servers and figures out which, uh, which tool to call or which MCP server. So definitely suggest to explore as this opens so many doors. Now, we talked about that building agent is challenging, but evaluating agents is actually even more challenging. So typically, you, you send a query, you get a response, and you just hope that things will work, right? So is this mushroom edible? You know, by the time you find out that it's not, <laughs> it might be too late. So the way that uh, evaluation works, there are multiple ways to do it. First is tracing. So with tracing, utilizing MLflow, you can see the agent reasoning. You can see which tool it decides to call. You can see the first token generation. So a lot of these small things that will help you to optimize your agent. The other thing, you can also provide your labeled feedback and utilize AI judges. So AI judges will look at your guidance, they will look at the different benchmarks, and then will judge whether those agent benchmarks are satisfied or not. And third option is also utilizing subject matter expert. So uh, bringing subject matter expert and using their labeled feedback to optimize this even further. Uh, now I'm going to show you a demo how you can actually build optimization. Uh, behind uh, this product is MLflow 3. So what this demo will show, so let's say you have book recommendations, and book recommendations coming from different sources. So you need to extract key information. Uh, so here's an agent that I built. So the first thing that you will need to do is put, uh, point it to your unlabeled data. So then the agent will figure out this JSON format, so it will understand all the key fields, and then uh, you can uh, click on the agent configuration, and for every single field, we will auto-populate all the configuration. So you don't have to type any of this, but you can also update. So let's say for book publication, maybe you want to change it to European format, and you can make those changes so that agent save your information in the right format. 
You can also provide like a system prompt, right, where you talk about the particular tone. And here is what is evaluation looks like. So for every single field, then you will see whether evaluation passed or not passed. And this is really critical because that's what separates from demos to actually put in into production. And not only tells you yes or no, you can actually see why a particular field failed. You can see here it's, it said that it wasn't uh, clear enough information in summary. And then you can auto-optimize. What auto-optimization does, when you provide, let's say, additional, you have to provide at least 75 entries, so a data set, then it's going to run through those different frameworks and identify which framework works better for your agent. And you can see, after I optimized my agent, my speed went up by 20, 27 times. So, because now my agent is specifically customized for my task. So, this is a big difference, let's say, with LLM prompting, because that LLM is not optimized for your task. So, that's why you, the agent becomes much, much faster, and also the cost uh, decreased by 69%. So, I showed you an example with information extraction. You can apply this to other agents. Let's say a very common use case is retrieval augmented generation. With retrieval augmented generation, typically it involves a lot of the steps, right? You have to take your data set, you have to chunk it, then you have to store it in a vector index, and then you have to build those kind of retrieval pipelines. So now basically all of this goes into one step where the agent is going to handle this behind the scenes, and one of our clients achieved eight times faster going from pilot to production with 40% of accuracy increase. So at the end, I just want now to thank my entire AI team that helped me to prepare for this talk. Um, as I was walking on, on my uh, walks and thought about what to present here, I utilized a lot of Nota, so thank you for listening to me, uh, for my voice generation to bring my ideas to reality. I utilized 11 labs. Um, some of the demos were recorded with Screen Studio, with AI-generated features. And I also utilized um, Google AI Studio to bring my ideas to images. So with these tools, it helped me to prepare for this talk in a fraction of a second, and I just want you know, all to think about how you can utilize this agents, tools to really empower yourself and transform also customer experience and transform organizations. Um, and one last thing. Il est temps de commencer à construire. L'avenir ne consiste pas à combattre l'intelligence artificielle, mais à la faire fonctionner pour vous. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much.